Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio, and we've got a whole bunch of new cards that we need to be having a little bit of a look at. You see, the Venusaur and Blastoise VMAX decks have gone and been properly revealed. Now, we did talk about a couple of cards previously. We talked about Professor's Research Juniper. I'll be honest with you, it, it's a pretty gosh darn important card, so we had a good old look at it. But there are a bunch of other cards we need to look at. So, let's take a quick run through all of the other lovely cards. We'll start off in the Venusaur deck, because Blastoise is better, so we'll save Blastoise for last. So, starting off, we've got a Yanma and Yanmega line. Yanma here, honestly, fairly uninspiring. 1 energy, 10 damage. 2 energy, 30 damage. Not particularly special. As for the Yanmega... There are some things to like here. 120 HP is alright for a stage 1. We, we'd rather have 130. But we've got free retreat here. And it's always nice to have free retreat. 1 energy, 30 damage is not good. But 2 energy, 120 damage really is. We talked about Zarud from this particular deck. And I told you that Zarud having 120 HP, retreat cost of 2, free energy 110 wasn't good. Well, this is Zarud. Now, it's a stage 1. I understand it's a stage 1. But when you add in the free retreat, and the fact that you do more damage for one less energy, I mean, come on. That's a pretty good deal. Now, I will tell you that you've got to do 30 damage to yourself in order for this to work. Clearly, that's not ideal. But if you want a two energy single prize attacker, you can do a lot worse than this Yamega here. Certainly in, say, a Rillaboom deck where you're accelerating two energy with the ability, I can see a big advantage here. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is some amazing, game-breaking, awesome card. It, it's not. But what it is, is a very useful card that could end up seeing a little bit of play because of the free retreat and because of the two energy attack. And there is a big difference between a two energy attack and a free energy attack. Two energy means that the Rillaboom ability pays your attack cost entirely. And then you can go ahead and have a play around, attach your energy for the turn somewhere else. And please don't underestimate quite how useful and awesome that could end up being. There is a lot to like about this Yamega. Now, there, there is a random Cacnea in here. 2 energy, 50 damage. No. No, I'm not even going to try and, and, and tell you anything good about this, ladies and gentlemen. It's not particularly great. Similarly, we've got an Eldegoss line and the Gossifleur here. I I'm going to say it. It's bad. Because you see, we actually have a really nice Gossifleur for one energy. It's got Call for Family for free basic Pokemon. Search your deck for free basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench. That Gossifleur is a really good Gossifleur. Yeah, this Gossifleur's got an extra 10 HP. Nobody cares. It's terrible. But we do have a new Elder Goss here. Now, I love the artwork. The artwork on this is stunning. But for a single colorless energy, you get to choose one of your bench Pokemon and remove all damage counters from it. And on the one hand, yeah, this is not bad. There are plenty of reasons to get excited. Having said that, we've already seen it on Leafeon. The Leafeon that came around is actually a Sun and Moon promo card. For one Grass Energy, heal all damage from one of your benched Pokemon. Well, that's the same as this. Healing all from one of your benched Pokemon. Difference is this does it for a colorless energy rather than a colored energy. Now, it does have a second attack here. One Grass Energy, 50 damage, flip a coin if Tails, this attack does nothing. So, I mean, clearly Leafeon's got the, well, I don't know, actually. Free Energy, 80 damage, 120 on a coin flip is not exactly an inspiring attack. So, honestly, I think I probably prefer Eldegoss to Leafeon here. 
It's a nice little attack. I'm not saying it's phenomenal. The thing to remind yourself of here, of course, is that we do have Zarud. And Zarud comes in with a rather nice attack that does, I mean, it's 100 damage, which isn't great. But you also get to attach two energy from your hand to your bench Pokemon. And completely heal the Pokemon to whom you have just attached your energy. So, I'd rather try and use the Rood using the attack than Eldegoss. Having said that, let's say your opponent's got two or three prizes left to take. You whack Eldegoss in the active, completely heal one of your bench Pokemon... And it doesn't matter if Eldegoss goes away, your opponent has still got to KO that two or three prize Pokemon, and you've just healed it. That, I think, is the use we're going for here. Could be fun. Moving over into the Blastoise deck, we've got ourselves a random horsey, 40 HP, 10 damage for one energy. Yeah, let's just keep moving. We've got ourselves a Weasel here. Uh, I mean, Weasel's alright. 70 HP isn't bad. 1 energy, 20 damage. Again, we're not talking phenomenal here, but I can maybe see an argument. When we move over into the Floatzel, I am floored by the artwork. The artwork here is absolutely stunning. That's not a dramatic pause. That is me stopping to go, and that's all I can say about it. I adore the artwork. The artwork is phenomenal. But there is not really anything I can say about the card at all in terms of positive things. This Floatzel sucks. Now, there is a Volcanian here. And again, and the artwork in these VMAX decks is pretty gosh darn nice. And the thing about this Volcanian is there's a lot to like about the second attack. But there's also a lot to dislike about the second attack. That 130 HP is quite nice. We like it. 2 energy, 50 damage. We don't like. But 4 energy, 120, flip 2 coins, 120 for each heads. We kind of like. Now, if you hit double heads, you're doing 240 damage. That is enough to get a 1 hit KO on a Pikachu and Zekrom. This is good. If, however... You flip zero heads, you do zero damage, and that's terrible. Honestly, even if you flip one heads here, you're talking four energy, 120. It's not good enough. Now, we have got some help. We've got Frost Moth that will allow you to get the energy on, which is nice. And we have Glimwood Tangle that will allow you to reflip, which is also quite nice. I.e., if you don't flip enough heads... You can reflip. Remember, the reflipping is all or nothing. You cannot reflip just some of them. You have to reflip all, or you don't reflip any of them. But you know what? Why not? Well, okay, there's a pretty good answer why not. The answer why not is because you've got to put four energy on and flip two heads before it can really work. But when it works, it works, and it's beautiful. It is also quite interesting to point out here that this is the first regular water Volcanium we've ever had. We did have Volcanium Prism Star as a water Pokemon, but that was a Prism Star Pokemon. And we did get Shining Volcanium in Shining Legends that was a water Pokemon, but again, that wasn't Volcanium, that was Shining Volcanium. In terms of just ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill Volcanium... This is actually the, the very first one we've ever had. I'll let you decide how much you like it. Now, we do also have a Dreadnought line here. Now, we do have Tutel, and on the one hand, 80 HP, it's all right. It's pretty nice for a basic Pokemon. On the other hand, this is our third Tutel, and they've all had 80 HP. Don't get terribly excited. One energy, 10 damage. Two energy, 30 damage. It's just not inspiring. There's no real great reason to play this. I will say it is the only tutor that has a single energy attack. So if you go second and you have no other attack and this is stuck in the active, you can do 10 damage. And again, the artwork is phenomenal, but that's about the best we can say. As for Dreadnought here, we've got 140 HP, which is nice for a stage one. And we've got the, well, the fairly 
standard Dreadnought thing of it takes 30 less damage from attacks. Although I'm using Google Translate because these are fairly straightforward cards. And the ability is literally called Because It's Hard. Which might be my favourite ability name ever. I feel fairly confident that's not going to be the English name. Free energy, 130 damage. Again, it's not stunning. But if you play this on a Frostmoth deck as a single prize attacker, it's got a bit of beef. 130 is a good number to hit. It's not terrible. It's not great. But it's not terrible. And then finally, we've got a Cramorant. Which I think might actually be terrible. Again, I love the artwork. In terms of art, this is a phenomenal bunch of decks. It's just the playability that lets them down. Now, the Crammer in here has got 90 HP, so cheers for that. That's not particularly good. And for two water energy, you do 50 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It's worth pointing out every other non-V Cramorant we've had, there are three of them, has 110 HP. So the 90 HP is a bit of a slap in the face. Maybe if we get level ball back, and I did do a video about that recently, this would be better. But we haven't yet, so it's not. And, I mean, look, 50 damage to the bench is fine. But the two energy upsets me, and the 50 damage upsets me. If this was 70 damage to the bench, and we could be taking out Jirachi, and Galarian Zigzagoon, and a whole bunch of Evolving Basics, then my opinion changes very rapidly. But it's 2 energy, it's 50 damage, it's not good enough. A couple of these are interesting cards and are worth taking a look at, but I think it's fair to say none of these are going to set the meta on fire. But what am I going to do? Not tell you about these new Pokemon? No. That does not sound like me. But now you know, so you can tell me your opinion of them in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.